Oh. Hi everyone, Spider-Man and his good friend Ashton here, bringing you another episode of Self-Defense for Kids. How you feeling? Good. Good to see you. What we're going to be dealing with today is a front bear hug. Okay? Now, a front bear hug, there's two different ways in which this can happen. Somebody could be under your arms, or somebody could be trapping your arms. If somebody grabs you under your arms, it is absolutely the more preferable of the two. Although, somebody grabbing you is never an ideal situation. But you've got a lot of options when your arms are free, and they have very few because their arms are occupied by holding you. Right? So, Ms. Ashton, first things first. If you're in a situation where it's another kid, what we're gonna do is respond as effectively and with the lowest risk of causing long-term damage to them as possible. Here's what we're gonna do. Call this the box defense. What Miss Ashton's going to do is show you this motion by bringing her arm forward. She has a bend to the elbow, nice and high on the, off the ground, and she's going to grab her wrist. She's gonna straighten this arm completely, and this is the box, right here. Now, let me show you how strong this is. If she places her forearm against me and she just does not bend this arm, she keeps her knees bent and she really holds herself strong, I'm just gonna try to break this arm into a bent position, okay? Ugh. Now, I'm really trying, yeah? Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Yes. I was really trying, just to prove to you that you know you got an opportunity here to really have a strong defensive posture if you do the technique right. But if you let that elbow bend, or if you use your wrist instead of your forearm, it's not going to work the same. And here's how this works. I come in and we're talking about this grab right here. Now why does somebody do that? They probably want to pick you up. If they pick you up, this will still work. What she's going to do is take either arm, but for demonstration purposes, she's going to use her right. She's going to bring it in front of my face and put it right in towards my neck. Any part of the neck is going to work, okay? She'll grab her wrist, straighten her arm, and the more I try to hold her in that bear hug, the more that arm is going to put pressure against my neck and cause me pain, and I'm going to want to go away from the pain. It's just like if you touch your finger to the stove, you don't sit there and smell it burn and go, wow, that hurts really bad. I wonder if I should let go anytime soon. No, 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 it's immediate. Ow! You go away from pain. Same thing here, okay? So I grab her and I'm trying to steal her, take her away, pick her up, just be a, a pump. She brings her hand up, wedges it in, she steps back as she pushes, and I'm pulling and she pushes and she, and, uh, and we're good. And she can just sit there all day long if she needs to, because the more I hold, the more pain it's gonna cause me. She even has the negotiation side. Grab me in a bear hug. So it could be something like, as I'm pushing, I can say, hey, let go, let go. I don't want to play like this, let go. And she's over here going, ah, I don't want to let go, you're hurting me. So you grab me, let go, and then she lets go, and I stop too. So it's okay to have that negotiation while you're in the middle of this defense, because again, it might just be a kid who's a little too hands-on, and there's always going to be kids like that. Now, if it's a more serious situation, the box defense could work, but let's say it's an adult, and it's something like this. I pick her up, I'm like, you're coming with me and I'm stealing her. Remember smart targeting lessons? Ear clap, eye gouge, headbutt. Yeah? She will blow out my equilibrium with an ear clap, okay? You hit hard, she's gonna hit light. But as I go in and I grab her and I pick her up and she's like, oh, what do I do? She smashes right to my ears. Oh! What if one hit doesn't work? Do three in a row. I got her and she goes bam, bam, bam. She just keeps going, right? Okay, there's the eye gouge too. Ah! Now what do you do with the eye gouge? You just keep going until they let go, right? So just keep going. She grabs my eyes, ah, 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 until they finally put you down. If you're good at the head butt, you practice it on your body opponent bag at home. You can grab the head, do the ear clap, eye gouge, head butt, or just grab the head after the ear clap, bring the head straight forward to their nose. So I grab her, she goes ear clap and head butt. Boom! Headbutt to the nose will make someone let go. I don't care how big or strong they are. So this is your front bear hug defense. It's usually very, very simple. It's a great way for you to understand how to use your smart targeting in a situation that's a little scary, but also kind of common. I remember when I was a little spider boy, kids used to do this all the time, especially if they were larger in size. And they weren't always meaning to bully. Sometimes they were just like, hey, I'm really strong, look what I can do, and they pick a kid up. And you don't want to be grabbed without your permission. Doesn't mean you need to go ears, eyes, head, butt the nose. Try the box defense, talk to them very seriously, get them to let go, and then once they've let go, talk to them again. Say, hey, I really don't want you putting your hands on me. You didn't have my permission, I don't like that, don't do it again, that's it. Just tell them how it is, straightforward and to the point. Miss Ashton, thank you so much for creating a vision. Your message of the week this week, Spider-Man superhero mindset step number five goes like this. 
I remain calm in challenging situations. We've talked about this before. The idea is that when a challenging situation comes up, you want to try not to lose your cool. I get up off the couch and I hit my shin on the coffee table and I take my fist and I punch a hole in the wall. I pick up the cat and I throw it across the room. I yell at every member of my family as to how annoying this coffee table is and how I wanted to get rid of it at the last yard sale, but your mother wouldn't let me. And everybody then is, what, happy and cheery, right? Because they understand your grief. I don't think so. I think that that type of a situation is highly annoying, it hurts, but it's of no reason for you to completely lose your cool and disrupt the entire family. But people make a habit of just behaving however they want to behave. And that's what we don't want to do. The idea is that there are some times where you need to stand up for yourself, speak up for yourself, address the situation. But cooler heads often prevail, right? So the next time you bang your shin on the coffee table, take a few breaths, sit down, rub your shin, do the Peter Griffith, and then get up and continue walking where you were walking. Hopefully there's a member of your family, if they happen to see it, they say, are you okay? And you can say, yeah, maybe a little bruise, I'll be all right. Boy, that coffee table, I wish we could move it. And then maybe the next yard sale you actually do. A lot of times people feel that just because they are upset, everybody needs to hear about it. Making this a habit, very detrimental to the people you share your life with. And then when you go out to the world, you might just do this to a stranger who ends up wanting to get into a fist fight because of what you said. Now the situation has gone from bad to worse. Maybe even worse, maybe they're cuckoo. They might pull out a gun or a weapon or something just because you shot off at the mouth, right? Self-restraint, self-control has its place just like speaking up for yourself has its place. To remain calm in a challenging situation means that we are not gonna sweat the small stuff nor let ourselves lose control of our temper simply because a little annoyance or a minor inconvenience has happened. We're gonna be kids who grow up to avoid road rage and getting into fist fights unnecessarily, throwing temper tantrums as adults, where those little stomping of the feet as kids might have been like, oh, that's getting really loud and you need to time out, might turn into punching a hole in the wall, throwing furniture, and scaring your family half to death. To remain calm in a challenging situation is not a sign of weakness absolutely a sign of strength. Thank you so much for listening. See you in the next episode. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel. You can also like our gym on Facebook at Pecoraro's Fitness and Kickboxing. Visit our gym online at rpdojo.com and for our instructional DVDs, visit adamlanddvd.com. You can also check out these other Spider-Man videos.